And I will start by quoting um, a speech, uh, a piece in a speech that is very central, actually, to Felwin and Benedict's report. They quote uh, um, the former, well, they quote Amadou Mahtar Mbou, who used to be the director general of UNESCO. And that quote really uh, is featured very prominently in their report, and I would like to read it. The peoples who have been victims of this plunder sometimes for hundreds of years, have not only been despoiled of irreplaceable masterpieces, but also robbed of a memory which would doubtless have helped them to greater self-knowledge and would certainly have helped others understand them better. They know, of course, that art is for the world and are aware of the fact that this artwork, which tells the story of their past and shows what they really are, does not speak to them alone. They are happy that men and women elsewhere can study and admire the work of their ancestors. They also realize that certain works of art have for too long played too intimate a part in the history of the country to which they were taken for the symbols linking them with that country to be denied and for the roots that have taken hold be severed. These men and women who have been deprived of their cultural heritage, therefore, ask for the return of at least the art treasures which best represent their culture, which they feel are the most vital uh, uh, and, the, and whose absence causes them the greatest anguish. This is a legitimate claim. I have quoted this passage, quoted by Felwin and Benedict at length, for, to emphasize Three points. First, the affirmation that art is for the world, the notion of universality. Second, the acknowledgement by Amadou Mahtar Mbo in his plea for the return of this artwork that these objects do not speak to them alone, them being the people who have been uh, uh, deprived of them. In other words, they have learned in the process of their displacement, of their dislocation, to speak other languages. And third aspect, acknowledgement that these objects actually have grown roots in the place where they were taken. So this helps us uh, examine the question posed by Sean uh, earlier, what does it mean to return? And uh, we have to remember that the the greatest returner of all times, Odysseus, was not recognized when he came back home. So it is not just a process of having left your own space empty, and then people will say, here is where the obelisk was, and then you bring back the obelisk and it just retrieves its place. It is not that simple, because these objects have been translated. Translated translatio in Latin, so I follow the lead of my friend Kader and doing some Latin jargon as well. <laughs> translatio, as we know, which gave the word translation, is also the displacement. So translatio, in particular, translatio studiorum, was the transfer of, of Greek uh, philosophy and knowledge to the European world, or that is what the Europeans pretended, uh, that they were the unique heirs of that translatio studio. But this process of translatio, of translation, has uh, 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 taken place. These objects have found hospitality in new places and in new languages as well. So this is what uh, 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 complicates the notion of, of, of return. Uh, uh, um, and so just talking about colonial structural violence, which is now being repaired, answered to, responded to by the return of these objects is not that simple because we cannot say that the forced migration of these objects that left the homelands where from they had been uh, uh, drawing their meaning, often a religious one, are just going to come back and be reestablished in their former meaning. 
translatio has taken place. We have to remember that when the African artworks were taken uh, in the first place, uh, where they went was the Trocadero Museum of Ethnography. Uh, uh, Kader mentioned the Musée de l'Homme. It was first Trocadero Museum before it became Musée de l'Homme, first established in 1878 under the name Ethnographical Museum of Scientific Missions. And it became, in 1937, the Musée de l'Homme. And in 2006, the newly established Musée du Quai Branly became the home of the objects uh, called uh, uh, Representatives of Les Arts Premier from Africa, Oceania, Asia, and the Americas. So this translatio from primitive to premier uh, uh, was also something uh, uh, interesting uh, in, in the French language as well as English language as any language. So what I would like to say is that somehow the, uh, um, the relocation, the dislocation first from Africa to France, to that uh, musée ethnographic, but the relocation from that ethnographical museum to Musée du Quai Branly itself is another dislocation. In fact, this is not just transferring objects from a, 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 a location in Paris to another location in Paris. Somehow they have, by this transfer, meant undergoing even a longer uh, 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 journey. Because what I have in mind here is the very fact that precisely in the, around 1905, 1906, in the beginning of the 20th century, Many have been calling for such a transfer to happen. At that time, it was not the Musée du Quai Branly, of course, but it was Musée du Louvre. <coughs> Avant-garde artists, Fauvis, Expressionists, Cubists had given new meaning at that time to the word negre, associating it with art in art negre, Negro art, if you wish. And the phrase, uh, 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 express the translation of the objects stored at the Trocadero Museum from the colonial language of ethnographical specimen to the aesthetic language of art. So you had uh, these objects created uh, uh, the, the, the wish from a certain number of translators, as they, I would call them, to see them uh, differently from just being objects of curiosity at the Ethnographical Museum of Trocadero to become really object of art at Le Musée du Louvre. One such prominent poet, as we know, was Guillaume Apollinaire. Guillaume Apollinaire, before he died, uh, uh, was a real militant for the transfer, the translatio of these objects from the Musée uh, 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 du Trocadero, where they were just left, as he said, to ethnographical curiosity and be transferred to Musée du Louvre. And Kader just reminded us that actually when they were in this ethnographical museum, they were there with skulls as well. And they had exactly the same meaning as these skulls, objects of curiosity offered to you uh, uh, to, to, to explore uh, in, in the same way. So you would enter the place and say, oh, here is a skull of some colonial subject. Oh, here is some fetish, as they were called, of the same colonial uh, 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 subjects. So when Apollinaire was asked, saying, declaring that the Louvre should be collecting these exotic masterpieces whose appearance is no less moving, I'm quoting him, no less moving than those of the beautiful specimen of Western statuary, he was calling for another translation. And this is what eventually happened with the Musée du Quai uh, 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 Branly. Now, I would like to make three remarks about that uh, uh, um, translation. First, after authors such as Apollinaire, Lévi-Strauss, Malraux, among others, have demanded that African artworks find their proper place in the Louvre, the establishment of Quai Branly Museum has represented apparently the fulfillment of their wish to see these objects speak to aesthetic sensibility and not just ethnographic curiosity. So this translation could be considered a first gesture towards decolonizing African 
art. My second remark, I want to evoke the account made by Picasso to André Malraux of his first visit to the Trocadero Museum in the early 1900s. And Kader uh, uh, mentioned this to, I would like to comment on uh, uh, Picasso's affirmation that on that very day when he visited the museum, uh, he had a better idea of what Les Demoiselles d'Avignon that we have in this very uh, uh, place uh, 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 would, should be looking like. So he was meaning that the system of signs that constitute the African masks had found on that day their way into his language, producing the crossbreeding or the metissage that is, in the end, the aim of translation. So in the figures of the five prostitutes represented on Picasso's painting, the putting in touch of different languages has happened. In the same vein, when he was describing the emotion he felt at the sight of the objects that were gathered in the museum, Picasso declared to Malraux that, I quote him, the Negro pieces, they were intercessors, mediators, and he added that ever since he have known the word intercessor in uh, French. Intercession or mediation is interesting because actually intercession was the very principle of the creation of these art, objects of art in the first place. We don't have time to develop this notion, but what the African artist was doing in the first place back then in Africa was the same thing the sacrificer would be doing when the sacrificer sacrifices an animal and sort of expands and uh, uh, spreads the life force of the animal in the society. In the same way, the artist captures with that object, is supposed to capture with that object life force as if it was a dynamo, and during ritual ceremonies, uh, uh, spread that life force to the community. So intercession, or being an intercessor, uh, the very word that Picasso used on that day and that he learned in French, was really, truly, at the very principle of the creation of the object in the first place. And my final remark, my third and final remark, would bring me back to the question posed by restitution and the work presented by Felwin Sarr and Benedict Savoy in their report. One of these, those questions is, could be thus formulated, can restitution be a simple return by which the objects would migrate back into their ancient meaning and into their ancient language. There are two aspects to this question. First aspect, which is the aspect, uh, the, the, the defensive uh, uh, stand taken by uh, many curators, actually, who just don't want to talk about any kind of restitution, because these objects looted from Benin, as uh, Kader uh, uh, reminded us, uh, they think that they are very well where they are. Why should they go back to any place? And in order to be defensive about that, they become anthropologists. Uh, all curators are now very much anthropologists who, who resist it. They are saying, oh, well, returning these objects, we should return them not to the states, of course, but to the people they belong to, the tribes they belong to those ethnic, tiny ethnic group who created them uh, because we do not trust the states, they are all corrupt, they are all blah, blah, blah. And they would add, oh, but by the way, maybe those tribes have now converted to Christianity and Islam, and we know that Christianity and Islam are not very friendly vis-a-vis uh, -vis these fetishes, why if they destroy it the way uh, Taliban destroyed the, the Buddha statues, etc. I mean, these curators are being wonderful anthropologists, uh, 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 mourning the loss of ethnic groups and those ancient tribes who created this, and definitely the state should not have anything to do with it. Felwin Saar and Benedict Sawa are very clear. We are in a world of nation states, talk to the nation states. If you feel that there are nation states in uh, uh, Africa that one should not be trusting with these objects because they are this or that, it is very easy to do the math. You only have 54 nation states in Africa. 
just give names. Say, I don't trust this one, this one, this one, and then we will discuss those. But the one you trust, return if they <laughs> ask for them. So that is the kind of <laughs> pragmatic question of our restitution. Now there is more to it. There is the philosophical meaning that Sean had in mind when he complicated the question of uh, restitution. And Benedict and Felwin used the word re-socialize. These objects need to be re-socialized. That is the polemic aspect. At the philosophical level, it is interesting to ask whether such a thing as translating back, if I use the metaphor of translation, which is more than a metaphor in this case that I've been using, translating back into a language and a meaning considered premier or first. Uh, now I believe that translators uh, on the internet are much better, but everybody who has experienced translating back just to see that it is uh, impossible. And in a chapter of their book, Restitué le Patrimoine Africain, because it has become a book now, under the title Translocations, Transformations, uh, Benedict and Felwin quote John Pfeffer, Africa's diasporas of images, and acknowledge that diasporization has happened and is a continuous process of creation of new meanings for the objects. Now, Felwin has made to me the point that there are cases where certain groups retrieving objects that had traditionally played precise ritual functions were able to reinstitutionalize uh, uh, them and, as it were, recharge them with the same religious uh, uh, energy. I must say, Felwin is much closer than me to uh, traditional uh, uh, homeland religions. I am, uh, you know, in my family, they have wiped out everything like that. Uh, uh, for generation and generations, so he knows what he is talking about. I'm less knowledgeable than him about traditional religions. But I would like to discuss that with the point of view of Malraux, which actually spoke of this aspect of things in a more general way. It is not just that African art was religious art in the first place. Every single art has been religious in the first place. And Malraux famously talked about another translation, another translatio, which is what he called the metamorphosis, saying that art precisely starts once the gods have departed. So maybe we should meditate on those two aspects, re-energize or let the gods be where they are, let them depart, art will still remain transcendent. Thank you very much.